It was the familiar mantra at Republican rallies during the presidential election last fall. It grew out of a frustration with our continued dependence on imported oil. We will drill here and drill now, and now's when you chant, drill, baby, drill. Yeah. Drill, baby, drill. Alaska's governor, Sarah Palin, who was running for vice president at the time, inspired calls to expand domestic oil drilling. What Governor Palin and others argue is that environmental restrictions should be lifted so that drilling can begin for oil under the so-called Outer Continental Shelf and Alaska's Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. In Alaska last September, she discussed her thoughts on U.S. energy policy. We can get to energy independence and a greater security for our nation by producing more domestically, by becoming less and less reliant on foreign sources of energy, those being controlled by regimes that do not necessarily like America. You don't think we're ever going to reach energy independence, do you? We absolutely can, Charlie. Part of the argument for expanding drilling is that because of new technologies, oil companies have discovered more domestic oil than ever thought possible. Twenty years ago, uh, estimates were that we had nine billion uh, barrels of crude in the Gulf of Mexico. Now the estimates are 45 billion uh, barrels of oil, and much of that has to do with the technology uh, that we can use to explore and develop. One of the biggest finds in a generation uh, was found in the Gulf of Mexico in the ultra-deep water. We just think it's a no-brainer. It makes sense. We can do these things. Let's do them. Is it really possible to drill enough to get us off a of dependence on imported oil? There are about 3,500 oil platforms in the Gulf of Mexico, but most produce just a few thousand barrels of crude a day. Now, these would be a couple of the older uh, shallow water rigs down here. Correct. Yeah, we've been producing offshore for 50 years, so a lot of these are really shallow water, maybe hundreds of feet. And now we're going out to 7,000 feet. Chevron, the company that spearheaded the historic deep water discoveries in the Gulf. I see the rig invited us to their new high-tech platform 160 miles offshore. There are two shifts of 46 men who work two weeks at a time here that keep the rig afloat and level using huge chains that secure each side. This is actually floating. It looks like it's such a permanent structure. Just, just think of it as a big ship, a floating vessel. Rick Bullock, who runs offshore operations for Chevron, told me the real work is done down here, 7,000 feet below the platform. That's where underwater robots can now maneuver under the crushing pressure of water that deep. And he explains that's just where the wellheads are. The actual deposits of oil are another 25,000 feet down. This is all the subsea stuff. In all, the oil is being brought up 32,000 feet, pumped up to the oil rig, and then into underwater pipelines that lead to shore. Bullock says because of new technology here, they're able to pump 65,000 barrels of oil a day, which at today's price brings Chevron close to $2 billion a year from this one rig alone. Ten years ago, we never thought we'd be this deep of water, 7,000 feet, but we are. Do you have any sense, given the progress that's been made, how much further out we'll be able to go? The next 10 years, we could be in 14, 15,000 feet of water. To a certain extent, the sky's the limit. It's true that because of technology, the U.S. is getting oil from areas unreachable just a few years ago. But the U.S. has fewer proven oil reserves than a decade ago. And there are no more gushing geysers, as in the heyday of U.S. oil. We operate like we have oil, because we used to have oil. We produce 5 million barrels a day, but we're squeezing everything to get 5 million barrels of oil a day. T. Boone Pickens made billions off the oil industry over his 50-year career, but the lifelong Republican says 
No matter what his party may say, we can't rely on what we have, regardless of how much technology may improve. When the Republican Party last year adopted the slogan of drill, baby, drill, what was your reaction to that? Well, what do you have available to drill? I have been asked this question, what would I expect to get if we drilled and I said that two million barrels a day, uh, I would be pleasantly surprised if we could do that off of those areas, two million barrels. Remember, we're importing 13 million barrels a day. So with the most optimistic drill baby drill doesn't get you anywhere near what you need. You haven't got a prayer. You haven't got a prayer. I'm T. Boone Pickens. I've been an oil man my whole life. This past I'm year, Pickens, Pickens announced his idea to get the U.S. off oil dependence. He has invested most of his considerable fortune in natural gas and renewable sources like wind. And nobody can take it away from us. It's our crisis, and we can solve it. You are, I think, known in most people's minds as sort of one of the last great oil impresarios, and yet you have moved away from oil. Oil moved away from me. It's harder to find. It's uh, expensive. I really got tired of everybody that ran for president from Richard Nixon forward that said, elect me and we'll be energy independent. In the year 1980, the United States will not be dependent on any other country for the energy we need to enact this urgent 10-year program for energy independence. We can protect ourselves from uncertain supplies by reducing our demand for oil. America must get to work producing more energy. To liberate America and other countries from their dependence on unstable sources of petroleum. We will make our country less dependent on foreign sources of energy. I thought, who in the hell is telling them that that makes sense? Because it doesn't make sense. But you know why they say it. They say it because it's politically palatable. It's because it's because it makes them sound good. I, I agree with you 100% that is true, but that's also not being honest with the people. You want honesty from politicians? You know what I mean. I mean, how can you? And that's why they weren't lying. It's because they were totally uninformed. They didn't know what they were talking about when they said it. Washington's been talking about our oil addiction for the last 30 years. Now is the time to end this addiction. When Barack Obama accepted the nomination for president last September, he echoed the pledge of his predecessors. But he made a more specific promise. I will set a clear goal as president. In 10 years, we will finally end our dependence on oil from the Middle East. President Obama has talked about being able to wean ourselves from Middle Eastern oil. He made the promise. He has 10 years. I ask you as the Secretary of Energy, do you think it's really possible? It is possible. Achievable? It's achievable because there are other alternative forms of oil. But in the end, we have to decrease our use of oil. The president's plan is to increase oil imports from neighboring Canada and Mexico, to increase incentives for conservation, and to invest billions in the next generation of biofuels and other alternatives to oil. Every president since Nixon has talked about energy independence. Is it really practical? We can work towards energy independence. I think the goal of complete independence in the near term is not practical, but there's a new 800-pound gorilla in the room, climate change, and the environmental aspects of using that much fossil fuel. So we're in a different position now. It's very important that the United States get ahead of the game. But getting ahead of the game is not easy in a city where politics often presents problems, especially when it comes to oil. The United States imports 30% of its oil from Canada and Mexico, and 9% from Saudi Arabia. Over a barrel continues in a moment.